Okay, but let's talk about what these, what the relational scheme is going to look like or what the set of tables is going to look like. Well, department number is easy. We'll keep with our convention, so we're going to make the, t the title of the table first. I'm going to open parens. Very first thing we do is department number. That's the primary key. And whatever, D name and location and whatever else, you know, the actual meaningful, interesting attributes we want to capture. So, department, no, let's get rid of that, department. So, nothing, nothing new here. And then, we don't have a separate employees table. Employees is being combined with the employee table, and that's why we drew this big circle, this big circle up here. And so, we'll, have, we'll still have an employees, an employee table. And, you know, the employee table has primary key, so at social security number, so SSN is the primary key. And then, you know, name and salary and all those other things. But we need one other thing to provide that link, the foreign key. And the foreign key is what provides the linkage. What do you suppose the foreign key is going to be? We've got all this information native to employee, social security number, name, salary. But we're including the employee relationship, which provides a link to department. So what's the foreign key? It's something that is actually native to a different entity that we provide in here to make the linkage. And if you're leaning towards department number, you're absolutely right. So this, and we, we depict for, foreign key or FK is, is indicated by an asterisk, just like primary key is indicated by an underline. So now we have a fully realized translation of that relational schema. And here is the really the new concept is this foreign key. Every time that you map a relationship to an entity, you are creating the instance of a foreign key. Similarly, if you have a relationship table that stands by itself in a binary relationship, the the attributes that will be there are the primary keys of the both of the participating entities. They will act not only as primary keys but also as foreign keys. They are they are both at the same time because you know if if the relationship between department and employee were many to many like this employees would get its own table because of the reasons we just discussed. The attributes in that table would be department number and social security number together. T only together do they uniquely identify an instance where somebody works for a department because you know social security number is unique but they can work in multiple departments so social security sh number shows up multiple times. Of course the department number shows up multiple times because department number has lots of different people working for it. Only working together do they provide uniqueness. However, where is department number native? In the department table. Where is social security number native? In the employee table. So they're also acting as foreign keys in a way. So you have both at the same time. Okay. So that is the essence of what we do in mapped translation. And that's really the only difference. Well, actually, that's not true. One other thing before we pull it to a close. If, and this is a rare cardinality, but say for sake of argument, and it certainly wouldn't be the case here, but if you have a one-to-one -one relationship, where for a given instance the department there's only one employee, which doesn't make any sense, say you're a real small organization, for a given employee, that person works in only one department. In that case, using the map translation, not only can you combine these, you can combine the whole kit and caboodle if you wanted. So this all would come together. And you could you could do D number and all the D related attributes, and you could do the E number and all of those related attributes, and you could put it together all in one gigantic table. Why? Well, I'd like to leave it as an exercise for you, but I also want to tell you the answer, so go figure. Um, because for a given instance of employee, you'll only ever have one department. For a given instance of department, you'll only ever have one employee. 
So you can glom the whole thing together. The interesting question to ask yourself when you find these one-to-one -one relationships, which are fairly uncommon when you're modeling, is are these in fact separate entities? Sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. But in any case, if we're using the map translation, we want to put all that information together simultaneously. Okay, So the one-to-one -one is going to be combined all together. The one-to-many, which is a far more common cardinality relationship, the relationship will be mapped to the n side entity, never to the one side entity. And many to many are always going to, the relationship's going to get a separate table. And so that's really the, the major difference here is seeing this one to many. Uh, now, in the next lecture, I will talk about the mapped with participation consideration. And there, just to give you a sneak peek, we look at these one to many relationships and one to one relationships, and we say, okay, if we were doing the map, we certainly could combine the relationship to the inside entity. However, let's look at the participation and see if it makes sense to do that, given that we want to avoid null values. All right, but that's getting a little ahead of ourselves, so uh, I hope this was comprehensible. Let me know if it wasn't. Study hard, and I'll see you online, and hopefully in just a few moments as you watch the follow-on video translation part three. Thanks.